Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at Bar Ilan University, and today I have a special lecture that I call Digital on Top Physical Verification. In other words, it's how to run LVS and DRC on a digital design that was made with a place and route tool such as Inovus, and I'll show it on an extraction physical verification tool, Calibre. So my lecture has six parts and we'll start with an introduction. And uh, the first five parts are actually LVS, which is the tougher of the two. And then I'll go into full chip DRC and, and chip finishing at the end. So just what is LVS? And I'm assuming that a lot of you have done a circuits course and maybe done some layout and actually run LVS on a small uh, custom or analog type of a block. So you would know already that LVS is when we took a design, um, whatever we made with a bunch of transistors, and we made a layout representation of that design, and now we're going to compare the two of them. So it's layout versus schematic. That's what LVS stands for. So we want to actually make sure that the layout that we made is the same exact thing as the design that we intended. However, this is uh, quite a struggle, especially once we go up to the digital on top flow, where we're doing it with digital tools. And so I see LVS more like something like that. It's a real struggle. It's something like Alien versus Predator. And also, sometimes the tools remind me of the days of, you know, those 80s when we had, like, really bad computers, really bad graphics. This is Dr. J versus Larry Bird, one-on-one, -on -one, one of my favorite games from the real early days of, the, of computing and gaming uh, on a Commodore 64 or an Apple II. So how does the LVS flow work? So again... We have our design, the thing we drew in our schematic, or in the case of, uh, this, uh, uh, of this lesson that we're, we'll be discussing that the place and route tool, it made up the design, and we have our layout. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check that they're the same. So the first step is we're going to do net listing. We're going to turn this schematic, this nice design drawing, into a spice net list, um, which we're going to call the source net list. Then we're going to take our layout and we're going to extract the connectivity and extract the devices from the layout. And so this extraction operation is going to give us the layout netlist. Now that we have two netlists, they're actually spice netlists, we are going to be able to compare the two. But a minute before that, during extraction, we're going to do what is known as an electronic rules check. So we're going to, just going to do some sanity over here to see that there are no uh, big short circuits or all kinds of things like that. Okay, and then we're going to compare the two, the source and the layout netlist, and see if they're the same. So, as I mentioned before, I assume that many of you um, are custom designers or have done some sort of an undergrad course uh, doing custom design LVS. Um, and so, if you use Virtuoso, for example, doing a custom LVS flow, what we're going to do is exactly what I showed before. We're going to draw our transistors in the schematic editor. We're going to run net listing and um, provide our, uh, our, our LVS tool with a source net list. Then we're going to do layout with our layout editor. We're going to run extraction and provide our LVS tool with the layout net list and compare the two of them. Usually this is done with some sort of UI or some sort of like the plugin of Calibre into Virtuoso. Um, we just press a button and everything here runs in the background giving us the LVS report at the end. Well, the digital flow is a bit different. It's actually kind of strange the first time you think about it. So we have our place and route tool, in this case, Inovus, and we have our big layout of our whole chip here. It could also be a block. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll be discussing uh, kind of on the same level, the two of them. Okay, so here, this is the source of both of our, um, of both of our layout and our netlist. We just want to see that the things are the same. So we're going to use a, a, a command such as write netlist to write out our Verilog netlist. And remember, everything we do is going to be with a structural Verilog type of a gate level representation. So we, now we have a Verilog netlist. Um, and on the other side, we're going to write stream. And, and the stream is a, um, is a layout file in the GDS2 format. So we're going to stream out this layout file. So we have this binary file in GDS2 format and this Verilog netlist on, on the left here. But our, our LVS tool, it compares spice netlists. So what do we have to do? We have to take our Verilog netlist and turn it into a spice netlist. And we can use a tool such as V2LVS from Mentor Graphics, and we get our source netlist. So that's going to translate the Verilog netlist into a spice netlist. On the other side, we have our GDS2, and that we can uh, is essentially the same as our layout we had in our layout editor. So now we can ext run extraction on it, and we get our layout netlist, and now we're going to compare the two. So these look really similar. Um, the big difference is that the, that the, the source of the... Uh, of uh, the digital on top flow, it comes from a digital tool such as place and route tool like Inovus, whereas the um, custom flow, it comes from our uh, schematic editor and our layout uh, designer. Um, 
So what's the big difference? Why is the digital on top flow problematic and why am I giving this lecture about it? Well, it's because of the integration of IP and hierarchical blocks. In fact, in the digital on top flow, we usually do our place and route based on like a left lib type of flow. We have different abstractions of the things that are going on inside and we want to make sure that at the interfaces between them that everything is correct and uh, everything is good. So here's a, an overview of the complete digital on top flow. We take our layout. This is very similar to what I showed before, just uh, blown up a bit with a few more additional um, details. We, on the one hand, pro provide our source netlist. So we use this write netlist command, which is going to bring out our Verilog netlist. It's a .v file. Okay, that's just writing out the, the, the uh, gates and the connectivity between them that we had inside our place and route tool. Then we're going to run v2lvs, which is going to turn our Verilog file into a spice file. We actually usually call this spice file a CDL file. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just a spice file without parasitics. Um, since we don't have the, uh, uh, the gates that make up each and every one of these blocks, some of these blocks may be custom blocks, such as analog blocks, that we don't have a gate level netlist for, but they're rather made up of transistors. We have to include all of the CDL files or the SPICE files of those internal blocks together, and these will be together um, merged into the source netlist. On the other side, we stream out the design, so we write out the layout of this ent entire thing, including the uh, metal layers and connectivity and the devices and so forth, and we stream that out into a GDS file. Um, again, here, for example, our standard cells, there'll be some sort of abstract like a left file and many of our um, other blocks too. So we're going to want to merge them all together. So we take all the other GDS files we have, we merge everything together into one GDS file. We take this GDS file and we run extraction. During extraction, we do this uh, ERC electric rules check and we get a report on the ERC and we'll try to understand what that means. So you have a kind of confused guy over here with this ERC report. Um, but you also get a spice net list of the, of the layout. And now we have a spice net list of the layout, a spice net list or CDL, same thing, of the source. And now we can compare the two and we get our LVS report. And you see this guy is also kind of confused and I'm going to try to help you make some order there. Okay, so just before we start, I'm going to just give a real simple overview of the flow. And let's assume that everything is fine. What we're going to do is we're going to take our Inovus or our place and route tool and write net list with all kinds of options in it. Okay, then we're going to run v2lvs on the netlist. It's going to create our spice netlist. Then we're going to write out our GDS from Inovus, so with this write stream command. Then we're going to extract the layout from the GDS2. We're going to use Calibre for that, so Calibre is going to extract um, uh, uh, the spice netlist. Then we're going to compare the source and the layout netlist. That's also with Calibre. By the way, these two steps can be done in one shot, and I'll explain that way, way later. Okay, and now we're going to go and look at all the painful details because each one of these steps is really going to be hard. Okay, so that was the basic overview of our digital on top um, flow. And uh, now I'm going to go into each and every one of these steps and show, highlight many of the problems and many of the solutions and workarounds for them.